Welcome everyone to another Next Normal event. Welcome to the opening and uh, happy International Women's Day. Uh, very proud to uh, finally again organize this extraordinary event, Next Normal. And as I said, uh, more than 1,000 people are joining us today. Uh, as already mentioned, this is actually the opening and uh, we have some pretty amazing speaker lineup who is opening the Next Normal event. Uh, with the title Disrupts Pharma's Transformation, the Continuous Journey for Proper Customer Experience, a very urgent and hot topic which we will discuss. And uh, actually today uh, we have uh, uh, in this panel Maria Rad, the VP Customer and Digital Strategy, Commercial Excellence from Janssen. Maria, how are you? And happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be part of uh, this discussion today, Mario. Thank you. And for Ron Eduard, the senior vice president from Grunenthal, our very fellow and good colleague from the past. So hi, for Ron. How are you? Hello. I'm perfect. Great weather, perfect location, perfect time for that discussion. Fantastic. So let's deep dive into the conversation. And my first question, which we mutually agree during our preparation call, this is how would you define the current state of our ongoing transformation process? Maybe we can start with you, Maria. Yeah, so I think when when I look back at um, at pharma industry as such, you know, this is a we operate in a very traditional uh, model, but we have a high compliance and uh, regulations that uh, that actually put some restrictions on what can be done or what cannot be done. So having said that and having this in mind, I think we are progressing really well, but there is a long way to go. And what I mean by that is over the last couple of years, I think COVID was a catalyst for me in terms of business transformation, whether this is on the digital side or whether this is on the data and analytic, uh, commercial data science, you know, you name it, right? Because we all of a sudden felt the need of engaging differently with customers and trying to meet the need of our patients in a different way, because all the normal traditional ways were not any more viable. So I think from that lens, I would say that we have started a good journey of transformation. I don't believe that we are yet in the end state of it. And then the other thing is the fast changing environment around us, you know, just only emphasis on the fact that we're on the start of this journey and not yet done with it. And, um, and if I reflect back on, on my company, on Janssen, on J&J &J in particular, I believe that we have defined, which is a very good point, you know, define the baseline and the foundational elements that you want to build uh, internally, whether this is capability, whether this is uh, uh, new operating models, whether this is defining, you know, uh, what is really enabling the business in terms of te technology, digital and data. This is the first step that you need to do. And I think that we have clarified this really, really well. We also understood what could be a hurdle from a process perspective for us. And we can talk more in details about which type of processes we need to you know, focus on. And I can name a few of them, for example, the content uh, uh, creation, production, the end-to-end -end view on it. Uh, how can we leverage it in a more efficient way? How could we personalize the engagement, uh, precise targeting, uh, agile ways of working? So there are many elements that we have defined at the start of this journey. And we're making very good progress against uh, against each one of them. But again, as I said, there's a long way for us to go. Thank you, Maria. I like your point that we are at the very beginning, so a long way to go, certainly. Uh, Forant, please continue the same question for you. So how do you see where we are currently in this whole journey? So um, so it's interesting. I think the, the effect of the pandemic uh, the last two years cannot be underestimated. I do believe it has completely changed the relationship between the pharma companies and the HCPs, and that the doctors, the nurses, the caretakers, I mean, all the, those people have learned to live in a digital world, uh, have learned to live with difficulties, uh, uh, not that their job was easy before, don't get me wrong. I think it's very incredibly, you know, a uh, complicated job they do. But I think in the last two years, it was even more complicated, always under pressure, under scrutiny. We have also realized the immense uh, power of the social media, including all the negative side of that. And the impact it can have on a single individual doing his job or on a single customer 
being overexposed to wrong fallacious information and with no way to, to correct it. And I think us as an industry, what it did to us is suddenly we were cut off our customers. We can't talk to our customers anymore. And I do believe it killed a commercial model that had been operating successfully for 20 years without ever challenging its validity. And suddenly we saw products selling without sales reps selling the product. Suddenly we saw doctors testing products without being told to test the products. And it made us realize that probably on, on the successful track of the 80s and the 90s, we had kept for too long a model that is not valid anymore or not efficient anymore. And that's when the finance teams, the other teams are coming and say, okay, guys, show me why should there be commercial rather than nothing? And that raises a big question. So that forces the transformation. So on the transformation itself, I think, yeah, we are at the beginning. We were lucky. So it's, it's also a question of size. We were lucky in Grunenthal to be relatively small. I mean, we are a mid-sized player. So we could align the people on the vision and move faster. What's really important is that it's not a 50-50 human technology. The technology is the must, but it's probably 20% of the real transformation. 80% is we need to work on mentalities, the approach, the strategy, the thinking, the values, the behavior, and that's what's going to drive the success of the transformation. Thank you very much, Florent. So we can all agree that we are at the very beginning, a long way to go. However, uh, in my opinion, we certainly disrupted the industry in the last 24 months. But can we be more specific and more concrete and uh, based on your personal experience, can you share some examples how you personally in the commercial or digital sphere, you, you uh, disrupted uh, the industry uh, towards, towards the stakeholders? Uh, maybe we can remain with you, Floran. Yes, so the, the, some tangible examples. The way we gather insights, the way we try to understand our customers, the microphone we give to our customer to tell us what they want, what they need. This is a piece on which we need to work and we have been working to really try to understand at every interaction with the customer, is it relevant? Is it helpful? Is it of good quality? Or is it just, okay, you know what? Uh, as usual, I got a sales rep in my waiting room and I will have to suffer 10 minutes for a detailed, I'm not interested. In. Uh, so that, you know, because that's the reality of the thing. So listening to the customer, being closer to them, understanding them is something we put a big focus on. Creating a safe space for the team members to innovate and do things different is another aspect as, as managers, as leaders, we have to be the one preaching that. We have to be the one holding the other people accountable for respecting innovation and risk taking. Because otherwise, the whole organization is going to default back to a model from before. Because in case of doubt, just do what the SOP says. And uh, so that's also another, you know, very tangible example. And the last one I would say is everything around GDPR, consent management, and, and data. It is critically important that the company takes that as a real problem to address. Don't try to brush it under the carpet saying, whoa, 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 we're going to ask for it, you know, when we need, but that we really think about it. How can we explain to our customers why we want their data and how can we use their data for the benefit of the customer in an obvious and transparent way? And I can tell you that takes a lot of discussion, a lot of people involved, some technology as well to make it work. And we are on that way. But I think on the long term, that's going to be a differentiator. If we don't have a fully compliant consent strategy, bad times await for the companies who are going to play with the customer data. Thank you, Farhan. Certainly GDPR and compliance always plays a very essential role, right? <laughs> Maria, let's continue with you. So what are those uh, concrete examples which you learned or implemented in the last 24 months? Yeah, and I want to build on what Florent has just said, right? Because I don't think that there is uh, uh, so many um, innovative, uh, uh, I would say, um, focused area that we could we could imagine right i think the the transformation for me has two aspects an internal one and an external one 
you've got to be excellent in both if you want to succeed. So if I think more about the customers, so from an external perspective, what we see is what Florent was, was, was mentioning, actually they're just consumers and they're just like us, right? So we consume information, we consume uh, uh, data, we consume everything in a, in a purely um, uh, uh, kind of a centralized way. For them, what is important is that they get the seamless experience. Now, how does the, this change versus the past is because we had to go in hybrid models, face-to-face -face did not remain the most important challenge for us in the engagement with traditions. So there were much, all of a sudden, much more channels to reach and engage with the physicians on. And, and that, for, for you know, from my perspective, meant that we need to really work on the seamless experience across the different channels. So it's not anymore a silo channel or a silo event in the customer journey, but it's more uh, a series of interconnected omnichannel experiences that we have to offer to them. So that's from an external point of view. Now, if you want to be impactful, to the point that Florent mentioned, you've got to have the right content. So you've got to you know, bring the traction behind what is most relevant for the physicians. And what is it that is most relevant for the physicians is actually talking about their patients, the practices, their practices, and how can we help them you know, get the best outcome for their patients, put them on the right treatment at the right time, early on if possible, and then have those patients, you know, uh, flow through their pathway, so the treatment pathway in the most effective, the best quality of life that we could offer and the best outcome at the end of the day. So that's important. Why? Because this is reflected in how we need to change internally. So on our internal side, we need to think about all our processes. Okay, how can we adapt them so that we are fast responding to the customer's needs? so that we can rapidly personalize the content so that you know we can talk about what is relevant for the customers that at the time they needed and maybe also you know where they want it right because if i engage with the physician through one-on-one -on -one email but that's not the best channel for that specific, specific physician i think the impact is lost on both sides so these were the few things that we started to um, put in place i i can i can tell you again that it's a long way because it cannot be done from day zero. It's some construct that you build within the organization on the process side, on the uh, technology side, but more importantly, from a change management perspective, simply because we used to work in a very traditional model in the past. And now all of a sudden you're asking people to switch off and on again in a completely different world. So this, I think, is for me is a good a blessing because change is always good and that's mm -hmm. the only way for us to survive in this environment but at the same time it's the most challenging thing to do if you want to be successful thank you maria let's be even more concrete and speak about the hottest topic which is certainly customer experience and we all know many industries achieved this ultimate level and goal of proper customer experience we can even claim that we all know this uh, customer experience etiquette like some other brands are enjoying from Mercedes, Starbucks, Apple and so on. And uh, my question to you would be that uh, how actually pharma can somehow move to this direction of uh, creating an etiquette of a proper customer experience towards the patients, uh, ACPs and other and other stakeholders. Let's remain this time with you, Maria. OK, so um, so as I mentioned, the fact that we are now turning into many channels and by the way when i say many channels i don't really focus only on the commercial aspects of it there's the medical engagement which is even more important you know in terms of bringing the uh, the best experience because it starts earlier than the commercial engagement uh, if you wish are you and for me the fact that we have to deal with many many channels you know we have to understand how the, the physicians, how our customers, and even patients, you know, in, 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 the, in the broader context are engaging with our content. So that's the starting point for me. And then we need to make sure that we always offer them what they need in the most attractive way. If I go to a website, I'm a consumer, if I go to a website and I feel like I have to scroll down all the way, the information is not really displayed where I need it, I turn it down and I go to 
another website, right? Or I go to another product. So it's really impacting my choice at the end of the day. Now, you need the product differentiation, but you need also the best experience. The combination of these two is lethal, in my opinion. So you start from the basics, making the basics right, offering services to physicians that are really meaningful for them in their daily practice. And then this should actually open the door to access them and to have more discussions around patient profiles, patient cases, how do you treat them? What do you need? How can we offer support throughout the journey and so on? And that has to be coordinated and orchestrated really well across all the channels, both in commercial and in medical affairs. Thank you, Maria. Foran? No, I totally agree with everything Maria said. I would just add maybe three points. One, you need to align everyone internally on the importance of customer experience in pharma. It's not a given for many people that this is useful. You, you still have some team members who fundamentally believe that the product will sell itself by its you know, medicine quality and that you don't need to create specific customer experiences that the ways of the past can, can remain the same, maybe with a bit of digital to, to, to be fancy. Um, the second one is you need to build the mindset and the capabilities in the teams to understand what customer experience truly is, to stop focusing on the product and its characteristic, to turn toward the customer and the experience. And what does it mean for an HTP to have a good customer experience versus a bad customer experience? And then how you create it. And then it, it takes teams to actually execute and show that Okay, how do you do a good webinar that creates a good customer experience? How do you do a good sales call that does a great customer experience? And, and that delivers on the expectations of the customer. So that while you are building your strategy and building your capabilities, you start to build operational ex experience. But the other challenge of something like CX is that it's not a three months transformation for the organization. And our people, including ourselves sometimes, are usually impatient and anything that's more than 12 months is, ah, can we get it faster? And then when you do this type of transformation faster, you don't do it well. And you end up with something that doesn't deliver the value and everyone that is challenging, why did we do all that stuff? At the end of the day, it's the same thing. Exactly, thank you for that. And in the meantime, Stephanie also joined. Hi, Stephanie, pleased that you uh, could make it. And uh, let's continue this pet and uh, discussion about customer experience. So let's hear your opinion about uh, creating those proper doctor, uh, HCPs, uh, patient journeys, and so on. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you all. I think this is a great example of how our customers all have differing experiences and how do we navigate that. Um, even with myself logging in, you recognize that customers have different understandings of systems if we're talking about e-commerce platforms, if we're talking about interaction channels. And I really think it's critically important that we are adapting to our customers. We talk about such a thing as universal personalization and the recognition that each of our customers are different. Each of our customers have different capabilities or abilities whether it's in the digital space or a traditional channel, and how do we as organizations adapt and adopt a personalized approach in an environment where our customers could be an HCP, it could be an administrator that's navigating through the more transactional components of our relationship. So I really think organizations have a commitment and a need to really adapt to different user profiles, truly understand your customer as a whole, and how do you adapt and adopt your experience to those that are navigating it for differing purposes. And that's where I think the onus on an organization to understand personalization, understand their customer segmentation, and be able to adapt and adapt varied approaches while still, again, it's a delicate dance, while still ensuring continuity of experience. And HCP shouldn't have a drastically different experience than an administrator in terms of how they build a connection and a relationship with our organizations. So it's a delicate dance in terms of how do we personalize appropriately while ensure a consistent experience across users and customer profiles. Uh, and it's a really exciting environment to be in. I think within the pharma space, we have such opportunity to leverage many of the innovations that are coming from other industries because our consumers are consumers of other industries as well and have that high expectation that we're delivering in the same space as they have at their local 
um, sandwich shop that potentially has online interaction. They're looking for that same level of innovation in the pharma space now. They expect it. Um, and to the point that was made earlier, it it isn't solely about a product any longer. The marketplace is exceptionally competitive. And now it is about having a premier product, but also balancing that with a premier experience for our customers as they're navigating this journey. Thank you, Stephanie. I think, I value, I think the, the, the couple of things that, you know, to the point that uh, Stephanie mentioned, this is where there's uh, um, uh, critically important aspects of creating personas, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's not an easy job, by the way, because you need all sorts of insights on behavior in, you know, that you collect from third party internally in terms of engagement data that we could get and so on. But I think this is going to be the game changer because the moment you you understand the differences in the segments, and by the way, here we're not talking about segments as you have it in marketing from a product point of view, but more looking at it from across, you know, so from a behavior point of view, from a preference perspective, from a scientific belief perspective. So the moment you start reflecting on this and you have this done in, a, in an iterative way, because what seems to be real today can change in, in, in the future. It's not frequently changing though, but nevertheless, this is an exercise like the segmentation you have to do, you know, every now and then to keep uh, updated, uh, you know, on what co your customers need. And it's pretty much driving then your strategy uh, from an agile content creation point of view, because that's the only point where you can keep this relationship ongoing and valuable for your customers. And I think that's really, really critical. Thank you, Maria. We are left with less than two minutes and a very short last question. What is currently the biggest barrier for implementing proper customer experience which you, which you currently see in, in, in your industry or company? Who would like to go first? Well, I can, I can turn it back into a question. When was the last time you talked to a customer? That's <laughs> the biggest barrier. You know, if people don't go and talk to the customers, but do think that the customer want this and that because this and that, then the transformation will never happen. And that proximity with the customer is the one thing that will trigger all the positive circle of virtue in my mind. Yeah. So, I couldn't agree. Oh, so easy. So easy. Ask your customer, right? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the closer we can get to the customer, and by we, we need to remember that the experience is more than an e-commerce platform that we create or a product that we send. It is the holistic experience from start to finish with the customer. And there are so many critical touch points. So to a point made again earlier of, is your organization fully invested in placing themselves in the seat of the customer and recognizing that the experience historically may have been created in the place of the business, but we have to flip the script and understand that we have to look at it from the perspective of our customer. And in turn, the returns operationally will be monumental if we start to trigger our experiences based upon the seat of the customer, what our customers are looking for. And if we're all bought in and invested, whether it's from um, our labs to our sales to our customer service, it doesn't matter who it is. We all have to understand that the customer is at the critical focal point of all that we do. Thank you. Maria, final words? No, I would just tend to agree. Access is the biggest challenge, as we know. And now that personal and impersonal uh, touch points are becoming, you know, kind of very united. So digital is really united with face to face. You've got to understand where they go, what they want, and how do they consume the information or the content from our side. So I think this is crucial for us building the best experience that we could offer to our customers. Thank you, Maria. Stephanie Florent was a great opening, great discussion. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in person finally and hopefully soon and take very good care. Stay tuned and uh, listen to the upcoming uh, sessions. Hi, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.